Jacobs was against the southpaw. Fight before that against Vasquez at 154 pounds, also against a southpaw. So Brunel's used to seeing the mirror image at this point and the two-inch reach advantage there for Jake the Snake. Punch that numbers, Larry. You can see that the numbers are pretty close here. Uh, both fighters, the southpaws, southpaws do have an advantage against right-handers that uh, maximizes what they do. And here you get a, an idea of Pernell Whitaker's activity in some fights over the last five years. I'm not 100% convinced of the efficacy of this, these numbers because in his last fight against Gary Jacobs, uh, Jacobs was a cleverly awkward, very good defensive fighter. The numbers tonight might give us some kind of a clue of as how, how active he is. I recall that when he fought Buddy McGirt a year ago, Whitaker was just as active as he had been a few years before against McGirt. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Pernell Whitaker Jake Rodriguez fight is scheduled for 12 rounds. The usual rules are on, a, are on the screen again. The big difference in the rules for the second fight is that we go to the scorecards and a cut caused by an accidental headbutt once the bell has rung to begin the fourth round. Before that, it's a technical draw. Jim. All right. Thank you very much, Harold. And Jake the Snake Rodriguez enters to familiar music. Rodriguez completed his last sparring session with Burnell Whitaker down in Norfolk on the day that his baby boy Jake Jr. was born three months ago. He dedicates this fight and he says all future boxing endeavors to Jake Jr. Unlike some fighters, his manager says he has the second dollar he ever made. He used the first dollar to buy a piggy bank. Maybe that's because the uh, New York media, which is uh, one of the last of the, of the intense boxing observer medias in the country, has never thought much of Rodriguez. And so maybe he didn't think he knew where his next dollar was coming from, but when he won the IBF 140-pound title from Murray, it changed everything. He was not given a chance to win that fight. He's now considered more than a club fighter. He's considered a championship caliber fighter, uh, albeit perhaps a little bit past his best. His upset victory over Charles Murray a few years ago Maybe the biggest upset at 140 pounds in the last 10 years, one of the bigger ones in the sport because Murray was regarded as a lights out talent and Rodriguez was seen as a club fighter, but he out hustled him and won the fight. And the record for Jake the Snake, 28 wins, three losses, two draws, only eight KOs. You think Barnes lacked punching power? This guy takes it to another level. Got the cup on good, Jake? Yes. Got the mouthpiece? Okay, good. And just as Trinidad decided to make Barnes wait a little bit, Brunel Whitaker has decided that he's going to make Rodriguez wait just a tad. I used to take uh, a train out to uh, the eastern end of Long Island in the summer times and pass the station called West Islip. I always wondered who lives in West Islip. Now I know it's Jake nope. Barnes. You're wrong. He lives in Central Islip. Central Islip. Islip. Okay. Mm -hmm. Be careful. I don't know who lives in West Islip either. <laughs> you still don't know. But but right now. If there is such a place. Right now, some of them are angry at you because you're failing to make the proper <laughs> distinction between West and Central Islip. On the other hand, I've just become a hero there. <laughs> Thinks the champion is underway. There's Sweet Pea. It's been more than five years since his last knockout against a significant opponent. 
He had an interesting comment when we spoke to him yesterday. He said, they used to call me the rabbit, meaning derisively because he boxed with his feet moving around the ring. He says, now, he says, they're wondering what happened to the rabbit. They want to see the rabbit more because he is more flat-footed. I think he is, in general, throwing fewer punches, but he does it from a more flat-footed stance and tries to make each punch more telling and more effective now. I think that's been the basic change in his style over the course of the past few years. Oh, it's friggin' hot under these lights. And the record for Bernal Whitaker, remember the loss to Jose Luis Ramirez in Paris, was generally regarded as a bogus decision and was later avenged. The draw against Julio Cesar Chavez in San Antonio was almost universally regarded as a bogus decision. In the eyes of his most ardent supporters, Purnell is effectively unbeaten. And now let's go up to Michael Buffer for the pre-fight intros on this one. Ladies and gentlemen, by way of Bally's Park Place, Casino Hotel on the boardwalk here in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Main events monitor in association with your undisputed, undefeated king of beers, Budweiser. This Bud's for you. Present part two of a double welterweight rumble. This bout is sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board, Boxing Commissioner Larry Hazard Sr. and the World Boxing Council. Supervisor for the WBC at ringside is Steve Crossan. The three judges scoring the bout on a 10-point bus system will be Guillermo Ayon, Bruce McTavish, and John Stewart. And when the bell rings, the man in charge of the action, your referee, Frank Cappuccino. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Atlantic City by way of Bally's Park Place, it's time to do it one more time. Let's get ready to rumble! Twelve rounds of boxing for the WBC Welterweight Championship of the World. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing red, trimmed with white, and weighing 146 and one quarter pounds. From Central Islip, New York, he brings an excellent record of 28 victories. With three defeats, two draws, eight KOs to his credit, Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the challenger and former junior welterweight champion of the world, Jake the Snake Rodriguez. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the lavender trim with black and weighing 147 pounds. In 1984, he captured Olympic gold and went on to develop a professional record of 36 victories with only one defeat and one draw, 15 KOs. Ladies and gentlemen, considered by many to be pound for pound the best in the world today from Norfolk, this is Virginia, you, this is you, this presenting the WBC welterweight champion of the world, four-time world champion, Pernell Sweet Pea. Good evening, gentlemen. You were both given your instructions by the New Jersey Control Board. Both use touch gloves. Hi, baby. One of my spies tells me, Jim, that because these two fighters have sparred so many rounds, we just might see Purnell Whitaker turn orthodox fighter on a few occasions in this fight. Let's see if he tries it. <laughs> stay in your corner, Jake. He's never done it before. Meaning Always that he'll in stand in a now. conventional stance and use the left to jab. He believes that the best possible weapon against Jake Rodriguez is the straight right hand. And if he stands in a conventional stance, he can throw it more readily than from his normal left-handed stance. Rodriguez, a sturdy southpaw in good shape. Starts out trying to go to Whitaker's body. Virtually everybody Burnell has fought over the past few years has said, I'm going to wear him out to the body. So far, it's been done only in short stretches. Oh, 
Uh, let him go, let him out. First thing I noticed, Jim, is that Rodriguez is trying to go to Whitaker with that right hook because uh, Gary Jacobs did have some success with that punch. Boy, this is no Felix Trinidad fight. No, this is no Felix Trinidad fight. There's nobody in there with dynamite in his gloves this time. Could become a chess match between two guys who know each other pretty well. I remember Sonny Liston getting ready to fight Leo this Martin from uh, Philadelphia. Right. And his wife saying, oh, Sonny's been sparring with this guy for years. He used to whip him in training camp. Let me tell you, it didn't work out like that in a boxing match. You got to forget all about ever sparring with a guy when you fight him in the ring. You ever fought one of your sparring partners, George? I did. And it was altogether different. Hard right hand by Whitaker. Rodriguez has slowed down after having come out firing. And this gives Whitaker a chance to begin his offensive pattern. Jab, jab, jab. And now Jake Rodriguez, who said he had to jab with the jabber to have a chance here. He'll begin to try to match his right hand stiletto against that of Pernell Whitaker. <laughs> Chopping left hand over the top, made contact for Whitaker. Good short right hand inside by Whitaker. Purnell, of course, an acknowledged master of counterpunching. Rodriguez says, that's a problem I don't quite know how to deal with. I'm going to have to go at him. So if he counters, he counters. This is one Larry Merchant's got to figure. You leaving it to Larry? No doubt about it. Oh, I think you'll come up with something, George. Sit down, baby. Come up. Your box beautiful. Box beautiful. Hey, that was a beautiful round. Beautiful. Yeah, that's, that's the way to go with the jab. Now look. He's leaning over. He's going to the left hand. But he's open for the hook because he's dropping, he's dropping his uh he's dropping his right hand. Okay. okay? So all you gotta do, as soon as he hook, come back with your double hook, because it's perfect for it, alright? Okay. Now look, every time you throw the left hand, just shoot the left hook. Look. That was a very simple round. You know, you're a boxer, so you just be the boxer, okay? You're looking, looking beautiful. You're looking beautiful. Stay right there. Walk me. away. Or we'll walk to the side. But don't just stand in front of him. And double and triple jab. you have show him one jab. Hold on. Three, two. Get rid of that. Now get out there and double that jab up. Keep slipping punches, baby. Keep slipping punches. Like Come on. Grab that. Come on. 49 jabs in round one for Whitaker by punch stat numbers. Landed 23 of them. That's a good start for Purnell tactically. Come on, get him out, get him out. Let him out, let him go, let him go. Batman. Never had to worry about Robin taking over. Jake the Snake has got to just give up that old Robin position and go to be Batman tonight. You want him to open up and be a little bit more aggressive than That's he's been right. so far? You just can't be second all the time. Go up and be number one. It's there for you. You're bigger, taller. Why not fight? Rodriguez, tough customer who can take a punch. Loves to brag that he has fought against nine unbeaten opponents in his career. And indeed, that's the case. And one of them was Felix Trinidad, and he took Trinidad the distance. One of only four fighters that have ever gone the distance with Trinidad. So this is a guy who's a good professional fighter, knows what he's doing in the ring. And you think about what we just saw, that's got to be more than impressive. Go that amount around. You think oh, Whitaker's at all affected by Trinidad's performance? Might have in the back of his mind trying to shine just as brightly as the younger man did? Whitaker is so smart. And he's pretty much able to shut out anything once he, once he gets into that ring. This guy is extremely smart. It's like a fox. 
If there's one thing he's proven, it is that he doesn't mind a little disapproval from the audience. He goes ahead and fights his fight, gets the W, and if you don't like it, well, tune in next time. What happened in 1991? Pernell Whitaker turned into a hard puncher. He started lifting weights, going to the body, landing hard shots. Sometimes you forget about combination. That's what he's kind of gotten into now, a hard hitter. He's backing the other guy up now. There was a time when he would have had to back up and land quicker, harder shots. But people talk about your relaxation level in the ring, how you're able to stay so focused and relaxed in there. In the lower weight classes, this to me is the king of that, George. He is supremely relaxed in there all the time. Supremely is exactly what he is. Maybe too relaxed because people not, they no longer want to see him win. They want to see a great performance. One thing about relaxation, you cannot perform too well as a boxer. You can only get knockouts. Whitaker trying for hard body shots here. So I far, he's been able to go, out go, throw Pernod. Rodriguez by a pretty significant margin. Jake the Snake just <laughs> not getting off much as Purnell starts and finishes these exchanges. Rodriguez trying for a hard left over the top. It was just short, and Purnell pats him on the butt as if to say, yeah, you're working in here. Give me a few more good rounds like this. <laughs> Okay, it's a little better, but listen to me. Keep your hands up, don't go straight back, all right? And keep double jabbing, and you, what you're doing is you're standing in front of them too long. Bing, 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 and then move to the side one way or the other. And don't drop your hands. Every time he throws the jab, you're dropping your hands. Don't do that. Okay, it's a good round. Then go over the left, throw an uppercut, okay? As soon as you get, I don't want you on the outside. When you throw the left hand on the outside, don't come back with the hook. Because I, I don't think you feel too comfortable. All right. All right. As soon as you get close, then go with the double hook. All right? Just one hook at a time. One hook at a time. Let's go with the one, but start at the bottom, all right? Got to start hitting this guy in the body. You can't miss him with the bottom. Start back in the body, okay? Beautiful work, baby. Beautiful work. They told Rodriguez that was a good round. I'd hate to see a bad one. Nell Whitaker, by punch stat computation, landed 22 out of 26 jabs in round two. 84% connect rate. Rodriguez coming out, trying to be much more aggressive in round three. He's thrown virtually all the punches, and now Purnell lands a right-left combination and starts peppering the jab again. Big effort by Rodriguez in the first minute of round three. It's about as hard a punch as Purnell oh, lands. Get them loose. Get them loose. One of the amazing things about Whitaker really is that probably never in his career, at any weight level, has he been in with a in the ring with a fighter who wasn't at least as strong and probably stronger than him. So he's put together his record against guys always stronger than himself. Let him go, P. Let him go, P. That's what made him a, a great boxer. He's after he's had to overcome so many obstacles. Once you do away with those obstacles, you do away with a lot of the skills you all, all ordinarily needed. Well, when he was a 12-year-old amateur, he used to fight against servicemen in the Navy Yard at Norfolk who were six and seven years older and outweighed him by 40 or 50 pounds. So he came up learning against the hardest kind of opposition. Yeah, it was swim or drown. 215 amateur fights for Brunel Whitaker. And everybody talks about the Olympic gold medal, but he won the Pan Am gold. He won the world championship. He hit every target you could put in front of him as an amateur and came to the professional ranks expecting to be a champion from the beginning. This guy's never thought he had anything to learn. How do you throw out of the window, Jake the Snake? I appreciate everything you've done for me, Duva. I've appreciated Purnell, but I'm going to take your position. 
He's having a rough time throwing I it out of the window. So he's treating Purnell with too much respect in That's there. right. Too thankful, and they gave me a chance. What do I do? He's taken two hard left hands in this round. Rare chances for Purnell Whitaker to exploit his own punching power, if in fact there is any. It hardly matters in most of Whitaker's performances, but he'd love to make it matter here tonight. Both your step back. Both your step back. Bill! Ah! Okay, Jake. Yeah, well, Larry, a lot of people want to see a confrontation, which will never take place in the ring, of course, between Pernell Whitaker and Roy Jones Jr., but they are going to do it on a basketball court. And as recently as Tuesday, Pernell was working out. Working out with World Be Free, the former Philadelphia 76er. And there you can see he can shoot that basketball like he can shoot his jab. <laughs> <laughs> he promises he's going to rain on Jones for 50 when their two teams are matched in a charity basketball game on December 9 in Pensacola, Florida. Let's see that left hand. In the unusual position of the aggressor, a straight left hand. Haven't seen that uh, orthodox stance yet, have we? Nope. Maybe he's holding it in reserve and doesn't think he needs it yet. Yeah, I think it's been too easy this way so far. Whitaker in round three again, 28 out of 38 jabs, 74 percent. Jake the Snake needs someone like Lou Dubin in this corner, talking about him, urging him on. Yeah, Lou's a good cheerleader, isn't he? Boy, that Lou Duva right, is top. Both of you, step back. Top, cream of the crop. You mentioned earlier, Jim, about come on, come on, come Pernell on, come Whitaker on. fighting sailors in his hometown of uh, in Virginia, Norfolk Naval Base. There, one of the real oddities I, I find is that. The two top pound-for-pound pound fighters both come from naval towns. And the Navy has always had great boxing programs, and both of these guys were involved as youngsters in kid programs that the Navy right, put on. Break. They have a lot in common with their Olympic gold medals and other amateur pedigrees. Whoops. Whoops. Jones didn't win an <laughs> Olympic gold medal. He only uh, should have. Come on, come on, get them hands loose. Get them hands loose, come on. Jones, of course, victimized in Seoul by the worst Olympic boxing decision in recent years. Rodriguez still cautious in this round. Round four, much like its predecessors, Whitaker has landed one hard overhand left. Uh, Jake, someone needs to say to Jake, Jake, get upset. You've been hit with the hardest shot in the world. This man is not your friend. He's trying to knock you out here tonight. And Jake is going about this at such a slow pace that he's giving Whitaker every opportunity to make it target practice. That's true. No brawling, no holding, on, no hitting ball behind ball the ball head, ball no ball fouling. Ball. There's some good stuff inside from Rodriguez. And Whitaker with a straight right hand says, get out of here. On the other hand, how do you outbox the best boxer in the world? Rennell there, as always, with his eyes open inside, countering at every opportunity. Double jab, straight left hand over the top, all connected. Rodriguez lunging forward in increasing frustration after four. Okay, the only thing you're doing is what we work in the gym that you're not doing. Harold Duddy got it scored you, through four rounds. Jim, 40 to 36, four rounds to nothing, Pernell Whitaker. Jim, I don't.
don't see why he has to go off the docks. He's the most ambidextrous guy I've ever seen in my life. No matter which way he stands, he's going to kill you with both hands, and that's the and that's the way this fight is going. He's just backing up Jake Rodriguez with that right jab, straight lefts. I mean, Jake is fading into the ropes. Parnell's bu building up a big lead. Forget coming back with the hook. I don't need the hook right now. Okay? Just keep coming back with the left hand. As soon as you go with the counter left hand, make sure you're close enough. All right? Don't fall in with this guy. All right? But the jab is busting him up. Just keep him up. Three, Jake. Keep him up. Jake, keep busy, keep busy. 30 year old Jake the Snake Rodriguez, former junior welterweight title holder, fighting at welterweight here against Rennell Whitaker, a man with whom he says he's had more than 100 rounds in the gym. Sweet Pea says, I'm not sure it was really that many. But then again, I don't keep count. Maybe it only seemed like 100 rounds for Rodriguez. Rodriguez will look in and think of throwing, and Whitaker just pops him. One, two. You make a mistake, and Pernell Whitaker punish you. Doesn't try to knock you out, he just punish you so that you will not do this again. It's almost as though the fact that they know each other so well has played much more into Whitaker's hands than Jake's, George. He seems to know what Jake is going to do before he does it, and he counters before Jake can even throw. He's definitely taking advantage of this, being familiar with him. Uh, He's taking advantage of it. Oh, Jake come the Snake on, come on, come on. does not try to explore his knowledge of Whitaker. Just not being aggressive enough to do that. You're going to take this guy's title, you got to knock him out. Make him get off the canvas. And no doubt, knowledgeable on, boxing fans yourself. in get the crowd yourself. as they watch this find their minds wandering too well. What would happen if it were Trinidad in there against Pernell Whitaker? What will uh -huh. that fight look like if, in fact, it takes place? Boy, a wonderful match. But then you bring out the best of Pernell Whitaker. <laughs> That's the classic boxer-puncher matchup, huh? Tell you. But I do not believe we've seen the best of that Felix Trinidad. Let him go, Pernell. Let him go, Pernell. There's more to that storybook. Matchup at 147 would, would have a faint glimmer of the Leonard Hearns about it. Whitaker, a boxer like Ray Leonard, and Trinidad, a tall puncher like Tommy Hearns. But like Hearns, Trinidad can box. Although maybe Purnell isn't as hard a puncher as Ray Leonard was. That Ray Leonard was everything you want in a boxer more. As he showed in the first turns fight. All right, break, break. Stop punching. Round five here, much like its predecessors. Purnell Whitaker patiently waiting for Jake Rodriguez to commit or make mistakes and then penalizing him for them with counter punches. Brunel not quite as active with the jab in this round as he is content to bide his time and wait for opportunities to pile up the points against Rodriguez. And the bell, and the bell. And as he walks back to the corner, Purnell turns and grins openly at George Foreman and looks at Roy Jones and then looks to the rafters as if to say, this hall isn't big enough for me. Just keep boxing this guy. It's just a matter of time you just weighing him down. You understand? Now when you get an inside, as soon as you get close, let the hands go up high so you can have something, so you can punch. All right? Because he's grabbing. As soon as you get an inside, he's trying to grab you. Okay? Right. But keep the good jab, but just keep boxing like that. Can if you, you hit him with these shots like that, he can't take this all night long like right. that. Okay. okay? You, you can fan him and you can go with double jabs with okay. this guy too, you know? You're boxing beautiful out there. And, and go with the feints now. Stay with the feints, all right? All right. All right. Look, it's just a matter Our of... Time slowing him down. Jake, throw your jab and throw that straight left hand that you like to throw to the body. Throw that straight left hand right at his liver. <laughs> but don't just stay there after you do it now. Right goes out. Trainer manager Dave Burke has been with Rodriguez from the beginning of his decade-long professional career. Oh. 
see if Rodriguez can try to release the straight left hand to the body that Burke is talking about. Both fighters trying to reestablish the jab in the first minute of round six. Rodriguez getting underneath to Whitaker's body. But strictly one shot at a time. That flurry blocked by Purnell's gloves inside. Purnell with a judicious one-two and then stepping back to await other opportunities. Hard left hand to the side of Rodriguez's head. Whitaker blocking most of those with his arms inside. Counter right hand inside for Whitaker. Goes to the body twice with his left hand. Brunel doing a lot of damage in this round. I've noticed something in the last two rounds that suggests something to me, George. Every time, or on, on several occasions. That was the result of an accumulation of body Four. blows. He hit him with about Five. six. Hard shots Six, to the rib cage in a row. Seven, eight. Exactly what come happened. Come here, come here, Jake. You all right, man? Okay, give me Jake a Jake looked like he was block. looking for an exit. He crosses himself as he goes into battle. And Purnell decides to come upstairs for a moment. I think he should go back to the body. That's where he did the damage. Pur Purnell Whitaker, like I said earlier, this guy, a knockout is the last thing he wants. He seemed to thrive on just throwing lots of punches and punishing a guy. But round six has been a clinic in body work. Another body punch knocked down. Three, four, five. You think Rodriguez wants any more? I'm not so sure. Seven, eight, nine. It's all over. He timed it to get up just in time for the fight to end. You know, Jim, I was about to say, just as that knockdown occurred, that on three or four occasions in the previous two rounds, when Whitaker did something wonderful, that Rodriguez gave him a nod. It was the kind of a nod a sparring partner does, George, in the, in the gym, saying, good work. Right there, body You knew it was going to end as that happened. <laughs> and uh, Whitaker George, was pretty merciful. If you're gonna knock a guy out, listen, I'm gonna knock him out in the body. He's been my sparring partner. That's what you do sometimes to your sparring partner. You wanna drop him, go to the body. Well, it was, it was local knowledge all the way. He knew what he could do against this guy. He was utterly patient in establishing his opportunities and took maximum advantage once the guy came in close. Here we go, first knockdown, and look at the body punches. Hard left hand there. And then around to the rib cage. Yeah, that left hand up top meant something too. Not as much as those tremendous body shots. Here we go again. Left hook to the right look hook to the body. Over top, just enough leverage to come back to the body. Back into the body, digging hard. And there had been a hard rain of body punches for 30 seconds before this. And then that last one to the rib cage as Rodriguez went down. And sometimes, like I said, when you spar many rounds with a guy, he's treated you right, you want to knock him out, but at the same time, you do it with the body punch. That's extreme confidence. Oof. That hurt. And that was as defining a statement as Purnell Whitaker has been able to make in several fights. We told you, it's been five years since he knocked out a quality opponent in a championship fight, and he seemed determined as round six began to at least have a shot at it tonight. Since 1981, he's tried to establish to the world that I'm not only a good boxer, but I can punch. He's made me a believer. I know you believe, George. Now let's go up to Michael Buffer for the officials on this particular knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here at Atlantic City's Convention Hall by way of Bally's Park Place, the official time, two minutes, 45 seconds of round number six. Referee Frank Cappuccino reaches the 10 count. The winner by knockout victory and still WBC welterweight 
champion of the world, Pernell Sweet Pea.